war against those not taking their solution. We have averaged 239 deaths per day, an increase of nearly 48% over the prior week. Each death is tragic and even more heartbreaking when we know that the majority of these deaths could be prevented with a simple, safe, available vaccine. The new cases in COVID are because of unvaccinated folks. Almost 100% of the new hospitalizations are with unvaccinated folks. And the deaths are certainly occurring with unvaccinated folks. These folks are choosing a horrible lifestyle of self-inflicted pain. Besides, you know, this emotional thing you just gave us, what is it going to take to get people to get shot? I don't know. You tell me. Folks supposed to have common sense. But it's time to start blaming the unvaccinated folks, not the regular folks. It's the unvaccinated folks that are letting us know. Let's just get to that, because this is clearly the biggest piece of propaganda ever at this time. It's so funny and hypocritical how the mainstream, when speaking for abortion, always use the argument of not telling women what they can do with their bodies. All of a sudden, they feel it's something that they can promote when it comes to those who do not take their solution. I support a woman's right to choose. I support it's a constitutional right. I support it. I will continue to support it. The liberal agenda always seems to be pro-choice, except for when it's something that they want you to do. It's hypocritical. This subject is such an annoying one because it's easy to see how much people are being mind controlled by it. Biden came in office in January and went into a sprint of vaccinating the public. This wasn't years, but months. 200 million shots in 100 days, in under 100 days, actually. After a six month sprint of giving their solution, they decided that the agenda was changing. And they basically are saying that the solution that was given over the beginning of this year was not good enough for the new variant, and people will be needing what they call a booster shot. Some people got two doses less than three months ago and are now finding out that they may need a third shot and that they need to wear masks again. Israel just approved their third shot. And what's worse about this is that they are making the ones who do not take the solution as the enemy of humanity, basically. And they are now increasing their fight against our decisions. We are not allowed to speak against them. You really don't know what you can say and can't say when it comes to this solution they are pushing. And to be honest, it really doesn't matter because they are showing they don't care about our reason, just about our compliance. So they are moving with the next round, which is pushing the mandatory vaccination. But they aren't doing it by law yet. They are doing it by employment. The federal government just announced this week that they are requiring vaccination of all federal workers who are be subjected to weekly COVID testing. Major employers like Facebook and Google are requiring it for their workers coming back to the office. In California, drastic action is being considered. And with the new push to get more Americans vaccinated as the nation's top infectious disease doctor warns, the U.S. is moving in the wrong direction. Now, local governments are taking matters into their own hands. We actually learned today that New York City will require all 400,000 city workers to get shots or face weekly testing. And California will begin checking proof of vaccination for all of their state employees. And then the Department of Veterans Affairs became the first federal agency to require vaccinations for its health care workers. And there is some positive news. Vaccinations are up nearly 14% in the last week, meaning the message that the shots could help stop the spread of the highly contagious Delta variant might be working. Those who are unvaccinated or decline to provide the requested documentation will be subject to regular testing and have to wear masks while working indoors. Across the country, restaurants are declining patrons who are unvaccinated. It's no vax, no service. No shirt, no shoes, no service. Well, you've seen those signs, no doubt. How about another one? Sign of the times. No vaccination card, no service. World War around the country. Okay. Now, while we are being distracted by this COVID news, this is happening right under our noses. The masses are not being fully told about this. But yet, every day, things seem to be increasingly elevated. There is nothing but war drums rattling. 
and they are telling us we are going to war without being so direct. The beginning to World War III is on the horizon. It's like they are waiting for someone to make the first major move to declare full-out war. Based on the narrative they are giving us, it looks like the war will start with what happens in Taiwan. But the United States will undoubtedly be brought in. President Xi Jinping making a veiled threat against the United States, warning that his country will not be bullied by foreign adversaries, saying that any threats would be met with a, quote, great wall of steel. World War III fears is China stages massive Taiwan invasion, drills and boasts it would defeat U.S. and U.K. in any conflict. Fears of World War III have been sparked after China staged massive military drills, invading Taiwan. Beijing also boasted about defeating the US and the UK in any conflict, and says it is confident the advantages are on its side. The latest drill includes assault landings and island control exercises in a bid to demonstrate the communist state's military might. It was conducted as the country is preparing its soldiers in case of an insurgency in Taiwan, Chinese state media reports. Everyone should know what is happening. Look at these headlines. Forbes, July 20th. The U.S. Air Force is sending dozens of F-22 stealth fighters to practice for war with China. The U.S. Air Force is deploying a huge force of fighters, including a possibly unprecedented number of F-22s to Guam to practice for war with China. They're practicing for war with China, but yet the general public is asleep to all of this. CNBC, Sunday, July 25th. Disturbing actions by China signal early stages of a Cold War, economist Stephen Roach warns. Remember, this is the same man who is predicting a dollar collapse. Again, in Forbes, Tuesday, July 27, thousands of ships, millions of troops. China is assembling a huge fleet for war with Taiwan. On CNN, also on July 27, U.S. Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin said, U.S. doesn't want conflict with China, but won't flinch when our interests are threatened. War is being spoken about consistently, but because it's not being brainwashed in the normal manner that they do with everything else, the majority of the public just is not paying attention, and they don't have a clue. Listen, just a week or two ago, China threatened Japan with a nuclear strike. They actually threatened to nuke Japan if they interfered with them taking Taiwan.